Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about something that I know a lot of you guys are struggling with and I know that I have been struggling with and that's being creative when I really don't feel creative. Um, the nature of the job that I do, especially on YouTube and doing all these online projects is that I have to come up with new and different ideas a lot. <laughs> and sometimes I just don't feel like it or don't know where to start. And I know with the virus and with stay at home orders and with everything going on, it's really, really hard for a lot of people to come up with any ideas or feel any motivation to be creative. And I completely understand that. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about some of the things that I do to try to help you guys figure out ways to be creative in this trying time, <laughs> um, but try to fi figure out ways to be creative when it's really, really difficult to be. So the first thing that I do is think about things that I love that have nothing to do with music um, or projects that I love that have nothing to do with music, like find inspiration from outside sources. The best and biggest example of that, which I will probably come back to a lot in this video, is 365 Days of Flute. Uh, I've talked about this before, but that project was inspired by 365 Days of Drag, which is Jeremy, formerly known as Fifi O'Hara's, 365 day drag project where he created a different drag look every single day for a year. And thinking about that, I was suddenly inspired to do it on flute and to figure out a way to do it on flute. And that was one of the biggest examples of it just because I was feeling so unmotivated, so low and so uncreative and so unlike myself that I didn't really know where to go until I found that project and found that idea. The most recent example is my makeup music project. Uh, I was feeling like I needed to do something on a grander scale, uh, not necessarily a year as I have some limitations right now as you guys all know, but something that was really big and involved with my community of friends. And I was like, oh, maybe this will be an interesting idea. And because it was something where I was asking people to write new music for me, I posted on Facebook like, hey, is this something that you guys, are, you guys would be interested in? I clearly had found something. And so I came up with some ideas. And uh, for those of you who don't know what that project is, I posted the first one last week uh, by Greg, Greg Watson. I will link it in the cards in the description. But basically I'm asking people to write music based on my makeup looks or makeup looks that they really enjoy that they want me to try to do or makeup looks that I come up for, with for them and then I record them and this is an ongoing project there's no deadline there's no set scale like I'm used to in these kinds of projects but it's just a chance to be creative and be creative with something that I truly love which is makeup and that I truly love as well in playing new music and playing composers works so there are two really big projects that I've started that came out of a completely non-musical inspiration. And I think thinking about things that you love or ideas that you love, I think Spencer Arias uh, will tell you that his cooking show, which I was on a few weeks ago, uh, is also coming out of an idea of like, how do I connect things that I love cooking and being in the kitchen and talking to people with music? And obviously that project wants, he wants it to go further than uh, just musicians, but right now it is a music project and that's really cool. I will also link Spencer's videos and his channel in the description and I will put the video I was in in the cards, um, but go check him out if you haven't already. The next thing, and it's something that I've talked about in an entire separate video, is replaying old rap, just kind of forcing myself to play flute, which is not always a great, thing, I understand, but just kind of going, okay, I need to play something today. I don't feel the motivation to practice practice. I don't want to play scales for an hour, but I do want to play my instrument. So I'm going to go pull out some old rap. And I think 365's like formation came from that idea of I wasn't practicing anything for real. I didn't have any gigs. So what was I supposed to do? I was playing old rep and realized that I had a lot of repertoire around uh, and there was a lot of really interesting stuff there. So why don't I make that part of the series? I've also uh, 
come back to some music that I'm like, oh, I really should program this or, oh, I should talk about this in uh, an all about music video or something like that. Like I've come back to things that I was like, oh, this would fit into a series that I already have or, oh, this technique is something that I should talk about. It is always kind of a influential thing to go back to music that I know. And I've talked about this a lot, so I will move on from that subject. And the really big final thing that I do to get myself into a creative mood is talk to people. Um, for me, Ralph Lewis has been an incredible resource. Um, he and I have come up with completely off the wall ideas that both of us have executed. Um, like we figured out and organized a 24 hour composathon at University of Illinois two years ago. That was not something that we were like, trying to come up with. It came from a joke, quite honestly. Um, and he and I have really been able to find that sounding board relationship, which helps me one, refine things, but also come up with things. Um, 52 Weeks, I think, was a lot of him, also Sean Calhoun. Like There were so many people that I talked to to try to figure out what I really wanted to do and codify these things. And I also, when trying to come up with the graphic score project, with the improv project, I asked people like, hey, is this a good idea? Or like, hey, I'm thinking about this. And someone would go, oh, why don't you do this? Or hey, let's like look at this thing. Or, oh, that kind of works, but this person's already done that. So like change it up a little bit. As well, I do enjoy doing things that other people have done. It's always fun to kind of put my own twist on it. So having that input from the outside world, from people who have other influences and see other things is always super, super helpful to me. And it also helps me really, really refine the ideas that I have that are sketchy. <laughs> um, I remember when I was doing the improv prompt project or when I was trying to come up with it, I didn't have really any ideas. And someone came up with the idea of improv and someone came up with the idea of like having other people tell me what to do essentially. And I was like, oh, put those two things together. That would be really cool. And I posted that and everyone's like, yes, that's super cool. We would like to do that. And that was where I also was able to run from. Um, having that input from the public and also that input of like, yes, this is a good thing, do this thing, <laughs> uh, is really helpful and it can really help you, one, feel confident in your idea and two, refine it to a point where you're confident in it uh, without outside influence. <laughs> So yeah, they're simple things. They're not big life-changing moments. That's not how life works. It's all these little influences and these little changes that you make that help you get here. To be perfectly honest, this video came out of me going, I don't know what to record. I have no ideas. And I'm like, oh yeah, I should talk about that. <laughs> um, so even just kind of thinking about your problem can help you find a solution sometimes. So I hope this video was helpful. I know it's not the most in-depth or long video I've made in the world, but I think it's something that's worth talking about. And as always, if you like this video, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe, and I will see you guys very soon. But basically I'm writing people to, I'm, 